Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. This session looks closely at the automatic UV unwrapping system, Smart UV Project, and I'll be discussing some of the differences and when you should use it and when you shouldn't. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again, follow the links in the description. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time and we need to unwrap this object so that we can paint on it. If you don't know what unwrapping is, then do check out my unwrapping playlist. That will give you a much more detailed guide with examples, but basically it's telling Blender where you want it to put a 2D image onto the 3D object. And the process of unwrapping is where we mark seams on the object and cut it up and then kind of spread it out much like a jumper, t-shirt or sweater. It's made from a 2D piece of material and it's cut out and it's got these seams that it's stitched together. It's exactly the same in a 3D program. Now like I say in this episode we're going to talk about the quick way of unwrapping. It has its disadvantages which I'll talk about when I go through but for texture painting it's actually really good. Now here's a quick example of the problems you might come across if you're unwrapping a texture that isn't texture painted. I'll go through more about what I've done here later on. But if I go to object mode now, you can see my mesh and it's got these red lines. Those are the seams and this is how I've cut it up. The problem you do get with these kind of seams, if I go back to the material, which is this checkered color grid over here, you can see that wherever there's a seam, there's an obvious cut in the texture. Now that's fine when you've got an obvious split in the texture, so the wood to the metal here. But it's not so great down the middle here, where you'll see an obvious seam between this side and this side. Now the good thing about texture painting is that whilst we're painting onto the object, Blender will kind of work out and hide the seams. But if you've got a texture that you're trying to put onto the object, like a wood texture on the handle here, and a metal texture onto here, then you would have to be much more careful about your seams so that you don't get awkward splits like this that you can see around the place here. But like I've said, texture painting, you don't have to worry too much and you can use this automatic approach for speed. I often use it when I'm creating game objects, but even when doing models for clients, as it's a really fast approach and if you know what you're doing, it can be very effective. If you're creating this model to sell or as a portfolio piece where you want to show someone your understanding of seams, then you will certainly want to unwrap it properly. The advantage of a proper unwrap is that you have much more control and you can be much more efficient about how you're using the UV space. So let's do it the quick way. We'll go up to the UV editing workspace up here. That will split our viewport into two. So we've got the 3D viewport here in edit mode and we've got the 2D image over here. Now before unwrapping this object we do need to do a couple of things. First of all I need to set the scale. So if I go back into object mode with tab I'll squeeze the screen across slightly and show you the item properties up here. You can see that the scale is non-uniform. That means it will stretch your UVs one way more than the other, which is undesirable. And the more non-uniform it is, the worse it will look. This probably won't be too bad because they're actually fairly close, but we may as well set the scale now to make sure it's perfect. So I'll press N to hide that panel. And with it selected, we press Control A and apply the scale. Now if I press N, we can see that it's all uniform and at one. I'll press N again to get rid of that panel. Now also, we've got these objects here which are still separate. And we kept them separate because we didn't want them to mirror to the other side. And in fact, I think this one still has a mirror on it. Now we don't want that because it will have more shading on this side where it is close to this object. And that's ambient occlusion that we're going to paint on. So we don't want a mirror at all on this object. So we can apply that over here. So into the drop down menu and press apply. Also the gun itself has a mirror on it. Now you can sometimes keep the mirror on and save a lot of space on your UVs because they'll just be on top of each other for one side as it is for the other. But for things like this area here, we won't be able to apply any shade because we've got nothing shading it on this side. So it does need to be different this side to this side and therefore a mirror won't be that effective. Also, it's not always great having a mirror because you have a sort of ugly seam down the middle where it joins. So when it comes to the automatic unwrap, we can apply the mirror for the gun as well. So up to the drop down and apply. When we're unwrapping ourselves, which I'll show in the next episode, we won't want to apply the mirror until we've unwrapped the object because we want to mirror our UV editing from one side to the other so we only have to do half the object. So generally speaking, 
unless you really want to save loads of space, you apply the mirror before you actually unwrap. Not whilst you're marking your seams, but for the actual unwrap. Okay, so we've got no mirror on these objects, but what I haven't done is check that these objects haven't got non-uniform scale as well. So let's just go in. Yes, it's okay because it's got uniform scale. However, it's not the scale of one. So it'll measure this object differently to the other objects, and that could be a problem when unwrapping. And this one too, and this one. So we need to select all these three and press Control A and set the scale for each of them. And you can see you can do those together and they've all got a scale of one. So remember, set the scale for all your objects and apply the mirror modifier. Okay, I'll get rid of that menu. Now I can select them all. And this is a great thing from 2.8 onwards. You can select multiple objects and unwrap them at the same time. So I can go into edit mode with all those objects selected. So that's including this sort of flint striking thing here. I can select everything with A and you can see its current state of UVs over here which are all overlapping each other which will cause us lots of problems. We can then press U to unwrap and then Smart UV Project. That will bring up this menu. The main thing you need to concentrate on here is the island margin. Just turn that up once to 0 0.01 for the moment. We can change that later once we see what it looks like. And now we can press OK. I'll bring out this screen a bit more now and zoom in. And you can see the work that it's done on the unwrap there. Also, you've got your dialog box of the unwrap just here in case you wanted to change anything. This is actually working out quite nicely. So the island margin is a good island margin because we've got a nice gap between our objects, but it's not too big that we're wasting space. The problem with this technique is that it's created a lot of islands and therefore lots of seams. And if you remember, I was talking about earlier how seams can be a problem if you've got specific textures that you want to place onto your object. It's not such a problem for texture painting. Again, it's not optimal, it's not ideal, but it works and it's quick. And the good thing is, because I've been able to select them all at the same time, these objects that are separate objects are still on the same UV map as the gun. So although they're separate objects, they share this space. You can join them to the gun, but it's much easier if they're separate objects for painting, and then you can join them all as one object at the end once you've painted. Okay, so that's how you automatically unwrap using the Smart UV Project method. In the next episode, I'll be talking about proper unwrapping, and that will reduce greatly the number of islands we have, and therefore the amount of seams. Okay, so hopefully you're enjoying this still. Lots of people have asked how many episodes are there. The next episode will be about unwrapping, and then we'll have a few episodes after that talking about painting metal, painting wood, and glass, and so on. Let me know of any questions you have or thoughts in the comments below. So until next time, thanks for watching.